What's up everybody, Coach Rob here and welcome back to another video. Seems like I just did one of these, probably because I just did one of these. And uh, I'm excited about the direction that this channel is going. Um, I said in a previous, uh, in several social media posts recently that I'm going to be leveling up my YouTube, YouTube game. I love this medium. I love getting this information out and you guys have been incredibly supportive recently. You've been subscribing, you've been doing the thumbs up, you've been commenting. I've been getting a lot of good feedback from people. So I'm giving back to you with more information and more content. I've redone my studio. I've made it far more accessible. I've brought up the quality a little bit. So hopefully uh, it's a little bit more appealing to watch. And uh, all I got to do is turn on that bright light up there, click record on the camera, sit down and go. I can just start pumping out content. So today's content that I plan on pumping out is going to be further discussion on high intensity training. I'd previously did a video uh, just a couple of videos ago on high intensity training and why it might not be for everyone, but how it's also been my ultimate weapon in putting on and retaining lean muscle mass and helping me achieve a physique that I was able to win multiple class wins in bodybuilding competition all the way up into my 50s. So we're going to talk more about that today. Specifically, we're going to talk about the split that I personally use and maybe why. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, protein requirements because it's another question I get asked all the time. And there's a very, very simple answer to that as well. So without any further ado, let's get started. And we're back. Uh, before we get started, started, I got to pay some bills. But there's really nobody I'd rather sit and talk about briefly than animal pack nutrition. And this isn't just another, you know, ad speech about some other sponsor. Animal Pack has been a company that I have been using their products literally since 1994. The OG, the original Animal Pack multivitamin pack. This thing is absolutely incredible. I have been doing one of these nearly every day. The only days I don't do it, or it might be a day I forget or something, like on a weekend. But for the most part, every day since 1994. And uh, I can't imagine going a day without it. I, I really can't. And when I had the opportunity to be a brand ambassador and to be sponsored uh, by Animal Pack, I jumped all over it because I believe in their products. I've been using them forever. It's amazing bodybuilding products by bodybuilders. And regardless on uh, regardless of how you train, how you eat, I think the Animal Pack product line is going to fit perfectly into your lifestyle. It's mega dosed the way supplements should be especially if you're hard training, if you're working hard in the gym, if you're a hard working weekend warrior, whatever the case may be, and you wanna make sure you have all your bases covered with your supplementation, Animal Pack's the way to go. I take an Animal Pack every day. Even if you just start with an Animal Pack, you're gonna be set on the right path. I highly recommend it. Lately, I've been using this TNT formula. It's a male hormone optimization pack, and it's not only uh, it's not only compounds that are going to help you raise free testosterone, but it's all of the support systems that any man would need for optimal health and performance. And I've been pleasantly surprised with this product, so much so that I've got it on a subscription. I got one comes every month, and uh, I don't plan on canceling that. I'm really, really enjoying it. I was skeptical at first, but then when I looked at what was in this thing, I realized, oh, that's right, this is Animal Pack. This is, they just don't throw out shit products. Everything that they do has a purpose. So it's full hormone optimization for men. They also have a formula for women that I recommend to my clients. So check them out. Go to animalpack.com. The link is in the show notes, and if you put in the code 10... The number 10 RGF for Rob Goodwin Fitness, 10 RGF, you're going to get 10% off your entire 
purchase. So go to animalpack.com, peruse around, check out what you like, throw it in the cart, add the coupon code 10RGF, bam, you're all set, and I highly recommend you do so. You will not regret it. Okay, here we go. High intensity training. In the previous video, in a previous video, a couple back, I'm gonna put it right there so you can click it, but don't watch it now. Maybe watch it after this one. I don't think you need to watch them in order. I think you'll be okay. I have been doing some form of high intensity training for nearly, nearly 30 years. I uh, started training super high intensity uh, in late 1994. And that is the mode of training that really took my physique to a whole nother level very, very quickly. I realized that I had good genetics and I realized I was a hyper responder. I was blessed. Not everybody is. I put on muscle quickly. So when I first started training and I was training with a competitive bodybuilder right out of the gate, I realized very quickly within a couple of months that I had good genetics. I started putting on muscle and then I went down the rabbit hole of looking into the world of high intensity training. It was a time where Dorian Yates was the current Mr. Olympia. I gravitated towards uh, his entire mystique. The, the, his whole entire attitude just appealed to me. It was gritty. It was, you know, blood and guts, lunch pail, blue collar. I will outwork your ass attitude, you know, working out in a dreary, you know, basement kind of shithole gym in dreary, gray, dark Birmingham, England, while all the other top bodybuilders were riding around in their convertibles, playing on Muscle Beach with bikini girls. Dorian was just out working the shit everybody by himself across the pond in Birmingham. And I just loved that attitude. I loved his attitude. And immediately I started reading about how he was adopting high intensity training, working with the great, the legendary Mike Menser, another one of my heroes of the sport. And I, I went down that rabbit hole and I devoured everything I possibly could about the subject of high intensity training. And high intensity training just made sense to me right out of the gate. If you look at high intensity training through a la rational logical lens, if you think about the philosophy of it, the, the, uh, how it, from a physiological standpoint, helps you achieve the greatest potential for muscle growth to occur, it only made sense to me. It never made sense to me once I started delving down that rabbit hole why anyone would have to engage in these marathon workouts, two hours, 20 sets per body part. It, it just didn't make sense. And when it was spelled out to me uh, through the works of Arthur Jones, through the works of Mike Menser, Dorian Yates, Casey Viator, and several others of that era. And even though John Perillo, another guru coach legend, wasn't a necessarily a, a low volume guy, he was still a very high intensity guy. He believed in pushing those sets to absolute grueling failure. So I also got an opportunity to work with John Perillo as well. Got to visit him and train with him at his uh, gym and offices in Cincinnati, Ohio. I had the opportunity to have a couple of um, uh, very cool um, cons consultation sessions with the late, great Mike Menser. And so, you know, back in those days, you know, I went all in. And it's a good thing that I did because my physique changed dramatically within the course of a year when I, adopt, when I adopted high intensity principles. So I wanna talk a little bit about that today. Um, since the last video that I posted here on YouTube, there's been a lot of questions as for specificity, exactly how do I approach my high intensity training reg regimen? So let's talk about that. So I like the Dorian Yates split. Why? Because that's a split that I tried after trying the Mike Menser split, the Arthur Jones split, which were all great. I got great results from them. But when I settled into the Dorian Yates split and his style of high intensity training, that's when it all just seemed to click for me. That's when the wheels just kind of went into motion. I caught a groove and I really started to get the results. I liked the split. 
I liked being in the gym. I liked training. This It was a four-day split, so it gave me an opportunity to, to be in the gym through the week, to test my limits, to engage in this incredible experiment of where I could take my body, how to push the limits of my genetics and see how far I could take it and what I could achieve. And when I found that it was about the intensity and the grit that I put into it, not necessarily the, the, the volume, I knew it didn't have to be a damn marathon, then that just, that idea of that just appealed so much to me because honestly, as Mike Menser, as Arthur Jones, as Dorian will say, and they and Dorian does to this day, if you put everything into a set, you're not going to be able to carry a workout like that for an hour. You just will not have the muscular endurance or even the mental capacity to be able to train at that level for that amount of time. If you are training for an hour and you're calling it high intensity, pal, it's not high intensity. Because if you're doing that shit right, you're not going to be able to go long because intensity and volume, they work on a sliding scale. The greater you move the dial toward intensity, the shorter the volume is going to be by default. That's just the way it works. That's just logic. So when I started applying those principles and when I finally learned how to take a set to absolute momentary muscular failure, and in some cases beyond by using high intensity techniques like rest pause sets, cluster sets, um, pre-exhaust supersets, forced reps, negatives. If you're one of my clients and you're nodding your head, you're like, yeah, th they're awful in a great way. I get it. Yeah, I, I just did one of those. It was terrible. Um, that shit works because it is truly testing your body to its ultimate limit taking you to its deepest reserves. It's triggering and stimulating growth to its greatest degree. And then you get the hell out of the gym, feed the muscle and let it grow. You let it repair, let it build. In this day and age, you hear people making fun of a split program, like a body part split. Uh, some people in the industry call it a bro split. Like the people doing it are just dumb jocks that don't know what the hell they're doing. These dumb knuckle dragging Neanderthals. They're just doing these old school dinosaur workouts, you know, chest on Monday, you know, back on Tuesday, legs on Wednesday. And they're making fun of that like there's something not right about it or something counterproductive about that style of training. Well, I don't know who came up with the term, but Fouad Abiyad, the uh, now retired IFBB pro uh, who has a very successful podcast and a very, very cool uh, supplement company called Hostile, I heard him say in one of his uh, podcasts, he called it a pro split and not a bro split. And I've been using that term ever since. I wanted to give him credit. I didn't come up with that. He did. But I agree with him 100%. And some of the, the top bodybuilders on the planet, whether they be IFBB pros or top amateurs or, you know, just it, it doesn't matter the affiliation, the top level, most of those men and women are still doing pro splits. And I love the Dorian pro split. Um, the Dorian pro split works as follows. Now, he did it in a way that, that I flipped it. I went backwards with it. Now, Dorian's pro split, his high intensity pro split, which was a four day split, he would do chest and biceps on Monday, uh, I believe it was legs on Tuesday. He would take Wednesday off. He would do shoulders and triceps on Thursday, and he would do back and rear delts on Friday. I like to reverse that. That's the way I do it. That's, that's, that's the most comfortable way for me to do that split. And it's the way that I enjoy it the most. And I have my own reasons for that. And they may not be your reasons. And I might not be able to justify it any other way than just that's just the way I like to do it. Number one, I do back and rear delts on Monday. So I do back and rear delts on Monday. And, um, it's because back is my favorite body part to train bar none. I absolutely love to train back. 
It is my favorite body part ever since, you know, two, over two decades ago, somebody said all shows are one from the back. The movements in back workouts are just intense. I love the deadlift. I like rack pulls. I like the reverse grip pull downs. I like bent over rows. I like one arm rows. I like, you know, uh, Yates rows. I mean, uh, chest supported heavy barbell rows. I just love training back. It just seems some, so much of an aggressive body part to train. You have to put so much into it. It takes so much out of you. So I like to kick off my week by working back. And then it just makes sense to pull rear delts into the back workout as well. They're already getting some pre-exhaustion. So you hit those babies as well. And with rear delts, you don't have to do a lot of movements to tackle rear delts. So I can go through a tough back workout and then save a little bit of room for one or two sets of rear delts, maybe just one or two exercises, and I'm done. Rear delts are done. So um, that's, uh, I always kick off the week with um, back and rear delts. So then that would take us to Tuesday, which would be shoulders and triceps. I love training triceps. So Boom, I get to come into Tuesday with another one of my favorite body parts to train because I got triceps on the menu. And I think shoulders is a very important body part to train for most people, especially if you have an aesthetic goal. You want those nice, round, strong, like grapefruit deltoids. And I always liked uh, coming into Tuesday, hitting the deltoids hard, hitting the shoulders hard. And then I got my one of, one of my favorite other body parts to train, which is triceps. I love doing heavy weighted dips. I love doing grueling sets of press downs, um, skull crushers, cable work with the triceps, you name it. So I got uh, shoulders and triceps on Tuesday. Wednesday would take the day off. On Wednesday, I will usually do a ruck on that day, which a ruck is just walking with a weighted pack. I like the intensity of rucking. Um, I like the fact that you're kind of adding a strength element into the mix. I only do about 30 to 40 minutes at most. Um, I was doing a little bit more rucking, but then I felt like uh, too much high intensity cardio was going to be detrimental to my uh, hypertrophy gains and the preservation of lean mass. So I dialed that back. So I'm doing a 30 to 40 minute ruck on Wednesday. And then I might throw in some abdominal work, even if it's at home. I mean, I can do abs anywhere. So I'm, it's sort of an active recovery day for me. And then I come into Thursday and it's leg day. I like doing legs on Thursday. I like doing it after a re recovery day. I'm already two sessions into the week. My juices are flowing. I'm into the groove. You know, I've got two hard workouts behind me. I've had a great recovery day. I've got to go out on a ruck and I'm just into the flow of my training week. And I need to be in that mental flow to prepare for leg day because it's the toughest day of the week. And if legs isn't the toughest day of the week for you, then you're probably doing it wrong. So we come into Thursday and do a grueling high intensity leg day. And then legs are done. And then Friday, the end of the week, we get to train chest and biceps. For some bizarre ass reason, uh, all the gym bros out there decided that Monday was International Chest Day. Bullshit. Friday is International Chest Day. End the week doing a fun body part to train. You can hit that chest from several different angles. Um, you can throw in some biceps. It doesn't take a lot of work to stimulate growth in the biceps. It's such a small muscle group. Really, one or two sets is all you need to failure, and biceps are fried. So that's the split that I like. So Monday, it's back rear delts. Tuesday, it's shoulders and triceps. Wednesday is either a day off or I go on a ruck or a walk or a hike or I chase my grandson around the park uh, and I might do some ab work. And then Thursday, we come into a hard leg day and Friday, we end the week with chest and biceps, which you guessed it, gives me the entire weekend off to fully rest and recover. Now, when I do a workout, I do, uh, here's my formula. People are asking me this as well, just to be clear, just so you know how I do this. Let's take back, for example. So I like to do the old Mike Menser pre-exhaust superset method. It gets my brain into the groove. It pre-exhausts 
the body part that I'm really trying to fully exhaust and take to total failure and stimulate that growth. So I may do uh, some method of, a, or some variation of a pullover. I might do a dumbbell pullover, but most of the time I'm gonna do some variation of a cable pullover. If I had a Nautilus, an old 70s Nautilus uh, pullover machine, I would always do that because that's one of the greatest machines ever and I wish I had one. <laughs> Mighty pullovers. That's the way. Or if I could get my hands on a hammer strength pullover machine, I would probably go that route. But since I don't have either in my gym yet, uh, I'm still on the lookout. I would go with some variation of a cable pullover, either a rope pullover or a strap pullover or a barbell pullover, uh, sometimes just standing, sometimes on a bench. But I'm going to do that pre-exhaust pullover to failure and then immediately superset that into some kind of a pulling or rowing movement. Now, I do two feeder sets on that first group of exercises. And then I do an all out to the death total set to failure. So if I'm starting my back workout with a pullover uh, variation, supersetted with let's say a reverse grip cable pull down, for example, I'm going to do two feeder sets at 60 to 70% of my max. Now, I had a great question from a client wanting to know if that 70% meant an exact mathematical calculation of 70% of what my actual maximum will be. You know what? In a perfect world, I think that's fine. And if you want to do it that way, that's fine. But it's so hard for me to truly calculate what my max is. And there's so many variables involved in that. I think of it more as a rate of perceived exertion. So in my mind, I'm going to take, I'm going to choose a weight that I know is challenging, but not impossible. And I'm going to uh, choose a weight that I know is going to be roughly in that eight to 12 rep range for me. And I'm going to take that set to 70%, meaning if 100% is all out failure and 0% is standing there doing nothing, I'm going to take that set to roughly 70% of my maximum output. So it's, it's, it is a bit of guesswork, but I've been doing this so long that I can come up with a very, very, you know, a fairly precise, precise calculation as to what 70% roughly of my max would be, which meaning I'm leaving several reps in the tank. If you, you just look at it that way. So I'm leaving several reps in the tank. I do this for a couple of reasons. I want to get my body warmed up. I want to get the juices flowing, the blood flowing. I want to get my joints loose, uh, prepared, for the all out set that's to come. And I also want to do this for the mental acuity part of training to failure. We talked about this in the last video to take a set to total failure. It is something that you have to learn. You have to learn how to take yourself to that place of all out failure. Many people will never experience that level of output. And I'm going to go ahead and say it, that level of pain, that level of discomfort that it's going to take for you to truly achieve muscular failure. When you're doing that third set, that set that you're taking to total failure or beyond by incorporating maybe a high intensity technique, to take that set to total all out failure is much more difficult than you can imagine. And you have to practice that. You have to develop that skill, and it is a skill over time. It probably took me over a year before I truly understood what it took to take my brain and shut it off, mm -hmm. shut off that central governor and push myself beyond the point where my brain was telling my body, was, was signaling an alarm to stop what this guy doing is going to cause damage. And I, and I want the damage. I want the structured damage of micro tears in the muscle. I want to collapse that muscle fully under the stress of that weight and that resistance that I'm applying so that when I leave the gym and feed myself properly as a defense mechanism, my body will respond by growing new muscle 
not only back to baseline, but overcompensating and adding new lean muscle as that defense mechanism in the event that I'm ever going to engage in that kind of activity again, which I will next week when I train that body part again. So by doing multiple sets beyond that failure set is doing nothing but lengthening the recovery process. It's doing what Mike Metzer called creating an inroad to the recovery process. So if I do a couple of feeder sets to get my mind right, to get my body warmed up, to get into the groove and be, become prepared for the onslaught that's about to come in that third all out set to failure, I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna take that set that third all out failure set. And I'm gonna take it to the absolute depths of total failure. I'm gonna go into the pain cave. I'm gonna give it everything I have. But when I do that, and if I'm satisfied with that, I'm gonna walk away. It's mission accomplished. Growth has been stimulated. There is no logical or rational reason to do another set. What would be the point? It's just going to create a deeper inroad to recovery. So I've taken the set to total failure. I've learned how to do that. I've accepted my fate. I, I've taken it to the depths and now I leave it alone to grow. So if you dig that hole, if that failure set is digging a deep hole because you're putting so much effort into it and then you leave it alone, now the recovery process is where the magic happens the body will start to, to recover that muscle back to where it was, back to baseline. That's filling the hole with dirt back to ground level. And in the event that it's going to be dug out again as a defense mechanism, we're going to pack a little extra dirt on top. That's new tissue growth. So that's the way to do it. So these guys that are doing marathon hour, two hour workouts, most, many of them, and I've been working in gyms for almost 30 years. I've been around thou tens of thousands of people training, and I can't tell you how many people are truly disappointed with the results that they're getting because they're so inundated with these guys on the covers of magazines or these Instagram you know, influencers or professional bodybuilders, which is not a realistic example of what the normal person is going to be able to achieve. Why can a bodybuilder professional bodybuilder engage in super high intensity workouts that are also very, very high volume. Come on, they're on anabolics, they're on gear. And what does gear do? Well, it heightens the recovery process. It quickens the recovery process. You recover considerably faster than the average person who is not on gear. So that's why I also say high intensity approach is going to be the ultimate style of training for a natural lifter and especially one over 40, male or female. If you're over 40 and you're natural, high intensity training, I truly believe is the best approach to maximize your muscularity at any age and to help preserve what muscle that you already have on your body, provided we feed it well. So that's how I do my high intensity approach. It's how I've always done it. And I think I spoke about this in the last video that I did, uh, high intensity, why it's not for everyone, part one. And I had done a competition in 2018 and the show itself was kind of a train wreck, but I, I don't blame, no matter how bad a show is, no matter how bad a promoter might drop the ball, I don't blame them. It's still on me. I need to be fully prepared for a show that's run like shit. And this one was. And there were a lot of variables at play. And I was in shape. Uh, but I have to admit that I probably took my eye off the ball a little bit from my show before 2018 and coming into 2018. And I, and I definitely can tell you I probably wasn't my best. And I learned from that experience. And then when I came into 2019, I was considerably better. I was considerably fuller, harder. I'd added some muscle, even at my age. My conditioning was greater. What did I do? The only thing that I changed, apart from maybe suffering a little bit more on my diet, I went full bore, old school, high intensity training the way I did it back in the 90s. I went back to my Dorian Yates four day split. I took 
sets to absolute failure. I probably wasn't in the gym more than 30 minutes. Um, I did a lot of forced reps. I had some great partners that helped me with forced reps and rest pause sets and supersets and negatives and strip sets and you name it. But it was, you know, one or two feeder sets and then one all out set of utter fucking insanity to the death. And then we walked away. And I came into 2019, won every class that I entered and uh, was very, very proud of the physique that I brought uh, that year. And I truly believe it has to do with me taking my training to another level. And that level was high intensity training. So there you go. So once again, high intensity training, as mentioned in the previous video, is not for everyone. Why? Because not everyone is going to want to take the time to truly learn how to push yourself to that all out failure point because it's not comfortable. It's not necessarily fun. It's painful as hell. But I can tell you, like many other endeavors, where there is a reward at the end beyond the risk and the pain, you know, once you achieve that and you walk out of the gym, the level of satisfaction and pride that you have as to what you just put yourself through and what you accomplished is definitely there. And I wouldn't, that, I wouldn't trade that for anything. So anybody that achieved something great had to suffer in the process to become great. And they would never trade that suffering because reaching the goal, crossing the finish line, reaching the top of the mountain, I mean, nothing tastes sweeter and nobody's ever going to say, wow, I shouldn't have suffered like that. I shouldn't have did that. No, it's worth it when you achieve that goal and you take yourself to a place that you weren't sure you could ever, ever take yourself toward or two. So anyway, that, that's, uh, that's how I do my split. I do the four day Dorian split most of the time. Sometimes we mix it up. Sometimes we change the split a little, uh, that's not unheard of either, either. I think sometimes it's good to mix things up a little bit. You don't want to get into a rut with your training. Um, we do two feeder sets, as I said, for the first, uh, for the first movement or the first superset. And then like, for instance, when I spoke briefly, I said, you know, like for back, for example, I might do a pullover variation, pre-exhaust immediately superset into maybe a pull down or a heavy barbell row. We're going to do the two feeder sets at roughly 60 to 70% of our max. And then that one set to all out failure. Then if we go to maybe a second exercise for back, the two feeder sets may not be required at all. And most of the time they're not. We just go into that one all out set because the pump has been primed. We're in the flow. We got a sweat rolling. We've been through that one set of high intensity failure already. The feeder sets may not be required. Sometimes I might opt to do one feeder set to get in the flow of that particular exercise. Sometimes I'm ready just to, to knock shit out and go right to that all out set. So some of my workouts are only three, four, you know, five sets max. And that's for both body parts. You don't need tons and tons and tons of exercises for big body parts like back. Uh, I may only do three exercises and then I might go to rear delts and maybe only do one or two because you don't need a lot to hit those small muscles. You might just need some rear cable delt uh, flies. You might just need some bent over dumbbell rear delt flies and then boom, take that set to failure and move on. So legs might just be two nasty ass supersets to failure and then we're done. So that, you know, that's the way we train. It doesn't have to be a lot of movements. If you're one of my clients, I have clients on my gold program, which is fully customizable, not only with the training, but the nutrition. I've got a handful of clients that requested high intensity training. So, you know, as I build their workouts each week, and then I start to get a feel for the way they like to train, uh, what suits them best, then I'll know when to put in feeder sets, when not to put in feeder sets, when it might be advantageous, when it might be okay to pull back on that, because I want them to get the most out of that session that they possibly can and get the hell out of there and let the muscles grow. So speaking of growth, I had several people last week ask me about, because I'm always talking about protein, I'm always talking about nutrition along with my training. They're saying this kind of training, this style of training, uh, how much protein do you take in? Well, as many of you know, 
the majority of my diet macros wise consists of protein and fat. And then I'll use a little bit of carbohydrates around my workouts. And it's often very less than you might imagine. But for the purposes of my, the, the scope of my day, it's built around animal protein and animal fat, uh, meat, eggs, poultry, fish, things of that nature. I will even have some whey protein from time to time just because sometimes my schedule is insane and that's all I have time to do. So I might pull down a whey protein shake and, and move on and make sure I'm getting my adequate protein intake for the day. I take in, I'm fairly lean uh, year round now. Um, I hover, you know, in the winter time, I might get to 12 to 14% body fat and that's okay with me because, you know, I want to have that good hormonal health. I don't mind putting on a little bit of body fat in the off season, you know, take that diet break. I think that's good for everyone. And then in the spring and summer, I might pull that down now that I'm not competing anymore. As long as I'm in that 10% range, I've got abs, I'm looking pretty decent. I'm cool with that. So because that's where I am throughout the year, I'm generally taking in 1.25 grams of protein per pound of body weight. It's a simple formula and it works really well for me. If you're extremely active or if you engage in very high intensity activity three, four days a week, if you're always on the go, which I am, if your output is very, very high, which mine is, then I think that 1.25 grams of protein per pound of body weight is a good start for somebody like myself or clients who train like myself. If you're not quite to that high level of intensity, then it's usually somewhere around one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Now, that is for somebody who is not what I would call clinically or morbidly obese. If you have somebody with a considerable amount of body fat on their frame, I wouldn't want to use that calculation because you're bringing too much um, non-metabolically active weight, fat weight, into that equation, which I don't think is a good idea. So at that point, if you find yourself to be carrying an excessive amount of body fat that you're trying to lose, I would find a way to try to get a rough estimate of what your body fat percentage is. And then I would use the calculation and go by lean body mass. So if you carrying more body fat, then you might want to determine roughly what your body fat percentage is and then find out what your lean weight is you know, based on that calculation. And then if you're extremely active and training hard, you might want to do 1.5 grams per pound of lean body mass. And if you're not quite so active, then play with maybe 1.2 to 1.25 grams per pound of lean body mass. Start with that and then adjust as needed and see how that does for you. And then the rest, the, the predominant amount of uh, macros beyond that protein is gonna be coming from animal fats. It's gonna be coming from the naturally occurring fats on the meats that I consume, the naturally occurring fats and the egg yolks or all the eggs that I eat and uh, other sources as well. And there are even some days where I might do a tablespoon of MCT oil and some black coffee just for that cognitive boost, get my morning rolling, I'm okay with that. Uh, or sometimes if I'm just only able to have a protein shake because of schedule, because of time, I might put a tablespoon of MCT oil in my protein shake just to have a little bit of fat in the mix. Um, it just depends on how we feel, how my day's going. But that's the way I generally would, well, that's what I would generally recommend somebody in terms of how much protein. Now, you know, there are people out there that are advocating two grams, even three grams per pound of, of body weight. I think that's excessive. I think it's unnecessary. And then you are running the risk of uh, an overabundance of gluconeogenesis and too much of anything is bad. So uh, I wouldn't recommend going beyond uh, what I recommended, at least as a start, and then you can make adjustments uh, from there. Okay, so that's how I do my protein according to the style of high intensity training that I do. And that's a wrap. So I hope this has been helpful. We can call this high intensity training, maybe part two, my split and how I work my protein in. I don't know, I'll come up with some clever freaking catchy title for the video. But um, anyway, so high intensity training, listen, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do, you know, go down there and hit that red button hit the notification bell, and please, for God's sake, hit the thumbs up. All these things matter 
to the YouTube algorithms to help get my content out to like-minded people who might enjoy listening to a talking head like me spout on about all this crazy shit. So please do me the honor of subscribing to my channel. It helps a lot and it helps justify me actually doing this stuff and it lets me know that you guys actually give a shit uh, and I would truly appreciate it. And also, listen, I'm a coach. I love what I do. I like working with other people. I like bringing out the best in others through training and nutrition. If you need a coach, if you want to work with somebody, if you want to get the ball rolling, go to robgoodwin.com. My gold package is fully custom to the individual. It's absolutely everything but the kitchen sink. Actually, the kitchen sink, the kitchen sink's included in that. Or if you just need kick-ass workouts based on the style of training that you like, look at the tier one program. It's all there, robgoodwin.com. Follow me on Instagram at Rob Goodwin Official. I'd appreciate that as well. But until the next video, you know what I always say, train hard, diet harder, but above all that, and even more important today is to have a good day. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much and God bless.